Hey beautiful people, what is up and welcome back to my channel. I am Jamila and I love all things beauty. I love all things makeup. I love all things skincare and I especially love sharing my tips and tricks for how to find high-end and luxury beauty products at bargain prices. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, I would absolutely love if you would consider subscribing and joining the fam. Okay, if you've been here for a couple of videos, you can you already know. The voice is because of allergies, so just <laughs> bear with me. I know it's not the hugest, but we just gonna get through this. Anyways, for today's video, as you already saw, I'm gonna be ranking the last 10 eyeshadow palettes that I've tried. It's been like a month or so, probably a couple of months since I've done this, which makes me sad because this is one of my favorite videos to do, but it has been taking me a little bit longer to get through palettes because I have been spending a lot of time just like enjoying them, using them multiple times to make sure that I really am feeling them. Uh, but this is really really is one of my favorite videos to film because I love ranking videos So I'm excited to tell you guys about these 10 palettes now If one of them is on the bottom and that's your favorite again your problem not mine. It's makeup It's not that serious guys. This is just all fun and games and this is how I feel today Like I haven't eaten yet, so I might eat and change my mind in like an hour so <laughs> Don't take it too seriously. It really is a this is how I'm feeling right now makeup preferences change and all that fun jazz so without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this ranking. Okay, coming in at number 10 is going to be one that's not going to surprise nobody. If you watched my video that I did with Kara, you know it has to go to the Melt 420 palette. Now this is beautiful. It is stunning. This is a gorgeous palette. I wanted to love this so much. You know that Tyra Banks mean we were rooting for you? I was rooting for this hard because the color story on that is perfection. And don't get me wrong, I got some nice looks out of it, but it was through a lot of prayer and Jesus and a couple of F-bombs because when I tell you the struggle was real waking with that palette to the point that I had to take my makeup off and start over, and I don't know about you, but me personally, I never have the time to be reapplying makeup. So that really irritated me about the palette. Even though I got a beautiful look in the end, even though I wanna create that look again, I'm like, Nobody should have to go through that level of struggle with blending and building and all of that fun jazz. And it wasn't the shimmers because there's one shimmer in this palette, eh? it was the mattes. And that was confusing to me because Melt as a brand is known for their mattes. But also Melt as a brand is known for being inconsistent. So I guess you get what you get. But the thing about it is Melt palettes are $58. At that price point, you don't have the luxury of being inconsistent, baby. No, you need to get your life together because you cannot be charging people $58. And then coming out with two dollar quality, I, that that the math ain't math in there. So for me personally, that did not work. I thought that the quality was bad, and I feel like that's a really strong statement to make because a lot of times I go into things where it's like it just wasn't for me, and this one I'm like it wasn't for me, and I feel the quality was bad. Now if it has worked for you and you are able to get it to work easy, I'm happy for you. I found that with this, the best application was going from dark to light, but that is just not an application technique that I do frequently enough to want to keep using this palette. Am I gonna declutter it? It's a hard maybe because I want to do that look again because it looked good. But I also am like I have to mentally prepare to do that again because I don't want to. I don't want to struggle like that no more, y'all. <laughs> I don't want to struggle like that ever again. So I don't know. We'll see if it stays or if it goes. Like my makeup collection is too big to keep palettes at a not even mediocre but bad. So it's one that could really get lost easily because I feel like. I have been traumatized by it and that trauma is like imprinted in my brain. So there's that. Coming in at number nine, and this will surprise you, it has to be the golden one by Pat McGrath. Y'all know I love me some Patricia. Auntie Pat will forever be Queen Auntie Pat in my mind. She's done some hot ass mess stuff with the brand, or well I'm saying she, but you know what I mean. The brand has done some stuff. But like, overall her quality is always phenomenal. Now there's nothing wrong with this quality wise. It just isn't special. I feel like it wasn't anything that made me feel like I wanted to like sing from the hilltops. And I also think that this matte shade could have gone deeper. Like, you see what I mean? I'm somebody that likes to have depth in my palette and that's one of the things I've always praised Pat for is that her products typically do have a lot of depth in them which gives you a lot of range and for people of deeper complexions give us a brown, give us a dark brown or a matte black or something and I get it, not every palette has to have depth but I thought that this was, it looked deep in the pan that I was like yeah I'm gonna be able to deepen up my outer V with it 
but I felt like it needed to give me more. And again, I'm not the deepest person on the spectrum of shades. I'm medium deep complexion. So people that are darker than me, I assume that for some of them, this could be a transition shade. So, especially once you start blending, it's gone. Like, you see what I mean? So I just felt like it didn't go dark enough for me. And that was basically it. Everything else, like quality wise, is perfect. You know, Pat's quality has never been one that I've ever really called into question because overall she is consistently good quality. It really does always kind of come down to her color stories and how innovative and rep or repetitive they are. And that one was just one that I was like, eh, I could have done without it. Maybe I'll sell it. Maybe we don't, I don't know, we'll see. Um, considering how much money I just spent on that Sephora sale, <laughs> I might have to. Okay, coming in at number eight is one that I actually really like, but I did struggle a little bit using it. And this is the Cosmic Brushes Muse palette. Now this is their newest release and I loved this. It's definitely on the cooler spectrum of it. But it is really similar to the first one that they released, which was the Serenity palette. So I understand if you don't want to buy both. I am glad to have both. I do think that there are differences between the two palettes. So I'm not mad at that. Now, I wanted to put this higher just on the strength of the fact that this is hella cheap. And quite frankly, to get 20 shades for this price mean, makes me want to rank it higher. But overall, when I think about the quality of this palette... I'm remembering that when I used it, I loved the mattes, their pressed pigments, they worked well, they built well, they blended well, there's enough depth in here, and even the lighter shades when I apply them to my lids, they're not too light where they look ashy on my complexion, which can be an issue with some palettes that I use, and they have lighter shades where it's just like, eh, that's not gonna work for me. But with this one, I felt like I could use all of the shades in here, including the lighter shades in the palette. Where I struggled a little bit was with the shimmers. I felt like they were... I don't know if they were hard pressed in the pan or what, but it just took a little bit of extra work to pick it up and apply it to the eyes. Now, not enough extra work where I'm like, this isn't worth it because like I said, the price of this makes it very much worth it, but it just took a little bit extra, which is why I'm ranking it a little bit lower because I'm also at the point with my makeup where I don't wanna have to work extra hard at all. <laughs> and if I am, it's because I need the final looks to be spectacular. So that's why this one does rank a little bit lower because I wasn't overly in love with the shimmers, but overall it's not bad. And this does get some bonus points for having some sort of like dual chromey shades. Like this one here is a dual chrome. Even this one is kind of a dual chrome, not a strong one, but you know, it did have some of those like slight shifty shades, which is nice as, again, especially for the price of this palette. And I don't think they actually call them duochromes. I'm just saying that I noticed like a tiny shift. Okay, next up I, and this is what, number seven. Number seven goes to the Moonfall palette from Shroud Cosmetics. This is a beautiful palette. This is absolutely stunning. This is just a colorful palette. And for me, I personally like to have a little bit of options to do a more neutral leaning look. And this doesn't give me that. And that's no fault of the palette. I knew this when I was buying it. But I love all of the looks that I get with this. I think that's extremely versatile in terms of how much looks you can get. And I've said this before, but sometimes nine pan palettes can be really monochromatic. And I don't love that. Like if you're giving me a monochromatic palette, it should be a quad, maybe a six pan, but not a nine pan. Once you hit nine shades, I need to be able to do multiple things with that palette. And this one gives me that because you get pink, purple, green, and blue. And it's like you have these very four different shimmers and you have five mattes that actually pair perfectly well with it so that you get so many different color combinations. And that's what I love about this palette is how many color combinations I was able to put together. And if you didn't know, the Moonfall palette is actually a re-release. They had the Moonfall shades as singles and then they created a palette. And not only that, they took the shades and they made them more sparkly. So I really do prefer this newer formula because it has more shine to it. The other shades, they were shimmers, but they actually kind of had like a matte look to them. Like they were really flat. They weren't like sparkly or, or even shimmery or glimmery or metallic in any way. They were kind of like flat shimmers. And I like this more sparkly shimmer vibe that they had going on with this palette. So even though I have duplicate mattes and, you know, in technically duplicate shimmers, even though they're different formulas, I'm not mad at it because I like this just so much better. Um, so yeah, that comes in at number seven, but it's by no means a bad palette. And here's the thing, all of the palettes except for that first melt one, not bad palettes at all. That melt one is trash though, but everything else I like, it's just where they fell. Okay, coming in at number six, 
has to go to the La Cienega palette from Adept Cosmetics. Now, I think that there are a couple of reasons why this falls lower. Um, first one being kind of how I felt about the mystery box, which definitely played into how um, I feel about this palette overall because I wasn't generally happy. And second being sort of the matte to shimmer ratio. Now, Adept is known for their shimmers. So the fact that this was super matte heavy, I, I actually didn't mind it. It's just that when I really sat down and thought about this for this rankings video, I realized that I was reaching into this palette mainly for the mattes to pair with other shades and not necessarily for the shimmers because I really do think that the mattes are the star of this palette. I think the shimmers are just okay. And the shimmers are that more crumbly, thick formula that Adept has. Like some of them are that super thick formula, like the PCH shade and this shade. These two are very thick in my opinion which isn't everyone's fav favorite shimmer. And I think that the curation of this palette just feels weird to me. Like, I feel like this isn't the most cohesive color story. Like, why is this blue here? Like, it's just unnecessary. Now, granted, I do like this palette for the fact that it is probably the most neutral palette that Adept has, but I wish they had chosen a different formula for pretty much all of the shimmers that are the thick formula here and gone with their smoother formula. And I would have preferred like a different color curation. Like I don't know why there are blue shades in here. Just make this a straight neutral palette and done. Like this deep blue and then the light blue shade. Not, I don't love that. But I do like this shade here, the outer corner. And this shimmer, which is like a beautiful, no this one, which is a beautiful gold. Oh my God, it's stunning. Let me actually swatch it. It's called Manhattan Beach. It really is the star of the show in this palette. And then I'm gonna swatch Santa Monica Boulevard, which is also really nice because these two give you the most neutral look out of the palette. This is still a little bit thick, but you can blend it out and get it to smooth out a little bit. And I like this kind of like purple grayish gold color that it has going on. Oh, I mixed that in a little bit, but ignore that. Um, but the PCH shade is so textured that it's a little bit like, chunky so I could understand why you know some not everyone is in love with this because this these textures are not necessarily my favorite that Adept has to offer and since we're here Hermosa Beach which is the creamiest So this is four out of the five shimmers, but you can see it just doesn't feel as cohesive to me as a palette. And like I said, when I was using this, I found myself honestly just reaching for the mattes and going elsewhere for the shimmers because I wasn't in love with the shimmers that were picked here both color-wise and formula-wise. Okay, coming in at number five, I have to give it to the Fantasy Cosmetica Rogue palette. Now this is part of a collection and the collection did include two fragrances. Quite frankly, I prefer the fragrances over the palette. Those fragrances are bomb.com, but we're not talking about that right now. We're going to talk about the palette, which is beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. You know, Fantasy Cosmetica is just one of those brands that, in my opinion, does it right. I think that they always get a really great matte to shimmer ratio. Their shimmers pair perfectly with their mattes. They always have, like, the right amount of depth where you can deepen things up and get it as grungy as you want. And the light shades that they choose are light enough that they could work for people of lighter complexions but don't look ashy on someone like me. So I love this palette. These are all either multi-chrome or dual chromes. They pair perfectly well together. You can use them on their own and use any one of these shades as like a matte blend out shade. It's just like such a well curated color story and the formula is amazing. It's smooth. It's creamy. Some of these are definitely more creamy than others. So if you have hooded lids or you have issues with oily lids, I definitely recommend looking at um, reviews of this palette to see if you think it will crease on you because I do think that if you are really oily, you could experience some creasing. But overall, I really like this one. Like there's nothing bad I can say about this. I created some really pretty looks with it and I had a blast. Oh my gosh, I did this halo eye, guys. Sometimes I still dream about that halo eye, this blue halo eye. It was just like chef's kiss. And I'm really like, Honestly, oftentimes I'm very scared to do halo eyes because I'm not, like, it's something that I'm not well versed in. Like, there's just so many makeup techniques that I'm learning, so I, I get scared sometimes of trying things that I'm not, like, very comfortable with. Um, especially because if I am reviewing a palette, I don't want the representation to be bad. 
if it really is my makeup application. <laughs> and I try to tell you guys that as often as I can to let you know that, hey, this is not the product. This is just me not knowing what I'm doing. There have been times where I have like mixed shades together and it came out to be mud. And that's just because I didn't think about the color theory of like mixing two shades and getting brown. Like you really have to think about that when you apply makeup, which I'm not trying to turn this into like a chemistry class or anything. But like I said in, in a previous video, there are rules to makeup and you can't just put anything on your face and it's just gonna come out okay. Because if you blend certain colors together, they look like trash. You re you remember that from kindergarten. So, you know, I try, to, I try to give you guys my best like, this is bad or this is just like, I didn't know what I was doing and I messed up. So yeah, sorry for the little side rant. I just had to put that in there. Anyways, keeping this going, coming in at number four, I have to give it to the Adapt Cosmetics. Uh, what is it called? Inspired palette. <laughs> I think I've just been calling it the Green Arrow palette, but it's, I think it's called No Name, but it is listed as the Inspired palette, whatever it is. But this is the one that's inspired by Green Arrow. So as you can see, it is a very, very green palette. Now the reason why this is ranking higher is because this has a ton of multi-chromes in it. And I mean like really shifty, beautiful multi-chromes. And the price for this was phenomenal because I compared this to the Blend Bunny Trove palette as well as the Danessa Myricks palette, both of which are way more expensive. Like the Trove palette is $68 for four shades and the Danessa Myricks is $125. Uh, and this one I believe was 60 something dollars. So it was definitely the best value for your money if you wanted to get uh, really great multi-chromes. And I was able to pretty much find every single multi-chrome in this one. Now I do think that the mattes are paired perfectly for this palette, but it does leave a little bit to be desired. Like this is again, another one of those palettes where you're gonna get a green look, you're gonna get a colorful look, you're not gonna really do much with it. This is the deepest shade. So it does like, this is all you can really deepen things up with. This kind of mustardy shade on my complexion tends to never show up. So I, I didn't hold that against the palette because I knew that, that was gonna be an issue for me and that's like a, a me thing, it's not the palette. Um, but yeah, I found myself having to reach into other palettes to use this because I felt like the mattes were just lacking in in like the variety that I needed. Like, so I didn't want every shade to have a deep green outer V. So I would go into the La Cienega palette to get a brown so that I wouldn't have to use this green shade. So that's one of the things that I like thought about in creating this palette. And now looking at this palette, I feel like these mattes actually look somewhat similar to the Melt 420 mattes. So I might be able to declutter that 420 and create the same look using just these mattes and probably a few others. So there's a thought for you guys. But overall, that that's a beautiful palette. I know it's discontinued now, so maybe we'll see it come back in the future. But if you are able to get, to get your hands on it, I do think that this is a really good value for the money because of the amount of multichromes that you get in this palette. And overall, the packaging is just cute. Like the La Cienega one had that like plasticky packaging. This one is the, you know, the leather one with the metal detailing. Love it. I think that this is adorable. Okay, coming in at number three is the Sydney Grace Unbreakable Bond palette. I love this one so much. I am basic at heart, so a palette like this speaks to my soul because you get the peaches, the browns, both the warm and the cool browns, and then look, a little bitty pop of blue, which is enough. And I just think that the Sydney Grace formula is great. I've talked about it before. I have no issues with the Sydney Grace formula. It's one of the most, if not the most consistent eyeshadow formula I've tried and everything just works. Like they always have really great depth. They give you the option to choose between a light and a deep palette so you can make sure that you have shades that are gonna work for your complexion, especially those transition shades, which can, you know, sometimes be too ashy for us. Uh, but yeah, I really like this palette. I thought that it was great. I also felt really um, connected to this palette because of the theme. So it's inspired by the three sisters of Sydney Grace and I, if you didn't know, I'm a part of a trio as well. So I have two sisters, one older, one younger, I'm the middle. So I was just, it really did speak to my soul. So because of that, that also gave it a little extra edge because, you know, palettes that speak to you a little bit differently just tend to like make you feel better. And makeup's all about feeling good, right? So that definitely pushed it up on the list. In addition to the fact that the qualities bomb.com and Sydney Grace can do no wrong when it comes to eyeshadow. I did receive that in PR, so um, in case you were wondering, and I will make sure to put which palettes I got in PR, which is which ones I paid for with my own money. Um, 
the coming in at number two is another palette that I got in PR and that is the Nomad Cosmetics Royal Europe palette. I do have a full video on this um, and it includes my thoughts on the theme and everything so if you want to hear that please hear my thoughts and all that please check it out. This is another really beautiful palette with great value for what you're getting because all of these shades are multi-chromes and these are the multi-chromes that I think we all start off with. These are the most common multi-chromes with the most common shifts and I really like the formulation of these. I think that they're all super shifty. They they give you that wet metallic look without feeling too wet metallic, which can be a problem because sometimes those over emollient shadows, like I said, can lead to creasing if you have hooded or oily lids. But I found that while this had like a wet metallic feel and application, it wasn't so creamy. Like you didn't see like a big divot when you dug your fingers in there. Now the matte shades, pigmented, punchy, almost too pigmented and too punchy. And the lightest shades in here are pretty rich. Like this looks like it's pretty light, but on the eyes, it's really rich. Oh, it matches my nail. Um, on the eyes, it's still really, really rich. And part of that is that these are actually pressed pigments and not eyeshadows. I don't know if Nomad is moving to all pressed pigments because they have palettes that have eyeshadows in them. So, sorry for the noise. I don't know who truck it is making so much noise, but Anyways, this, um, they have like some of the earlier palettes that are eyeshadows, but this is this one which is pressed pigments, and I do think some of the, like, their last two releases are pressed pigments as well, or they have pressed pigments in there. So that is something to just keep in mind. I know my girl Dion has sensitivities when it comes to pigments, and I'm sure a lot of other folks do too. So just, uh, make sure you read the Nomad site carefully to figure out which shades have pigments. I will say the vast majority of this palette is pressed pigments, so, um... If that's going to be an issue for you, just take that into account. But with pigments, you get punchier shadows. That's like the trade-off, right? Like you get really, really high impact shadows. And what these are high impact. Like I have been reaching for this palette a lot more than I thought I would. Um, and I've been really enjoying it. It's such a beautiful color story. And even though it is like very colorful when you look at it, you can still create a neutral look with it. And I love that they arranged this in columns so that if you don't know where to start, just go down the column. Like you don't have to think about it. And you can keep it neutral or you can just go, or you have blue, you have blue, green, pink, purple, all of that. So I thought it, it's like top notch. And then coming in at number one, this is a new brand to enter the scene, new brand that has entered the chat, and it is the Manita palette from Artitude Cosmetics. This is another palette that I received in PR, and y'all, I have been really skeptical about new brands. I was on my whole new brand, no new brands 2023, because I felt like I had what I needed. I was fine. And then this brand reached out and it said, we'd love to send you a new palette. It is a UK based brand, so I was like, okay, yeah, sure. And it was so much better than I expected. <laughs> like, I didn't know what to expect, but this blew it out to the water. First of all, you guys saw the packaging is stunning, and here it is. It is so beautiful. Now, this is a 20 pan eyeshadow palette, and again, like the Cosmic Brushes brand, it's really affordable for the price. And I don't know, like, if the UK has something different than what US brands do, but. I just feel like the UK brands tend to be more affordable than what we have here in the US. Now, granted, if you do buy this and you're in the US, shipping is, I believe, about $20. So you have to factor that into your purchase. But if you live in the UK, don't be out here buying US-based brands when you can get this. Y'all, the quality of this is perfection. The mattes are beautiful, buttery, blendable. And do you all know how I feel about matte eyeshadow? It can make or break an entire brand or an entire palette for me. And I had no issues with this. I thought they worked really well. They blended well. And the shimmers here applied like a dream. They're metallic. They, are, they give you that really shiny, sparkly look. They don't fade throughout the day. There are two like dual chromey slash multi chromey shades that have the slightest shift and not in like a bad way, it's in the most beautiful way where like, it's like you have to catch it, you know, like and someone, like you turn and you kind of see a slight, sh it's just stunning. I love it. I'm obsessed with it. I really like this palette. And even though it is pretty heavy on the greens, you do get some really solid neutral looks in there. Like you get a lot of green, but you also have the option to do like the sort of peachy shade. You have a pink, you have a blue, and then you have these like very neutrally orange leaning shades. So you do get a variety of looks that you can create with this. And the black, I I don't think it's 
watch this on camera, but this is the darkest black I have ever seen in my life. Let me swatch this for you guys. Okay, you see, you see the pigment there, right? Y'all, when I first swatched this, I was like, wow. Like, all jokes aside, it is amazing. And you see how well this swatched, no patchiness, no skipping. It's the same in which this applies on the eyes, which is why I was so impressed because you guys know how I feel about mattes being patchy. And yes, I get it. Swatches don't tell you everything. It can swatch well and not apply well. These apply just as good as they swatch. So... You could use this as like a like a um, liner if you wanted to instead of going in with actual liner. I love this palette. So that is my number one. I am so excited to see what Elsie Brand puts out because I thought that this was a such a well curated release and such a thoughtful release that I can't wait to see what else they have coming down the pike. So huge congrats to Attitude Cosmetics. That is the brand to watch in my opinion right now. So I'm looking forward to seeing what else they have. And it is a woman of color owned brand. So you know extra bonus points okay and that's it for me guys i gotta go because i need to go to tajay get some personal items pop by trader joe's and get some stuff to meal prep for the for the week plus uh love is blind season finale is tonight well the reunion is tonight so i gotta get me some popcorn so i can sit down and watch all the shenanigans play out live because <laughs> This season was kind of funny, um, so we should probably do like a chatty get ready with me about this season. Anyways, that's it from me guys. If you liked seeing this rankings video, go ahead and hit that like button. Leave a comment down below letting me know your thoughts on any of these palettes. Did you pick up any of them? Or are you interested in any of the ones that I showcased and why? Let me know all of that. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join the family. It is a vibe over here. And as always, I appreciate you guys more than you know. Thank you so much for supporting me and my channel. And I will catch you in my next one. Bye.